Um, this is a report from the Los Angeles Times. It's a really interesting article because there's a really macabre line here. Big up, from, big up to Frankie from This Woman for sharing this article. This is how I found it. But God almighty, I also have a need to go out, right? Anyone that knows me knows that, you know, I'm a big fan of nightlife culture. I used to promote a lot of nights. I, used, I still DJ now. I like to go out um, a lot. I travel the world to visit some of the best clubs. Um, you know, that good stuff. Been to Bergheim too many times to mention. So, you know, this extended period of lockdown has really made me um, desperate and hungry to go to a dark, dingy warehouse somewhere with minimal to no uh, light, to minimal to no windows, loads of LEDs everywhere, people dressed in amazing clothes, dancing to a techno beat for six to eight hours. I would love to do that, right? More than anything in the world, right? More so than having a steak and a, and a glass of red wine. I'd love to go to a rave very, very soon. <clears throat> but some people are just really desperate to go outside, like legitimately desperate. So much so that they're going to put their own life to it. So much so they're willing to sign away their life, right? To give up on life just so that they can go somewhere and hear that pumping bass. And this article kind of speaks on it. It's really interesting. So this is from the LA Times. It says the following. This headline says, As LA reopens, an underground dance party draws revelers and worries health experts. <coughs> and the urban picture is a pitch is a cue of a lady in a nice club going outfit lace uh, leggings on little hot pants mesh top and a dude wearing a face mask with a sort of skull thing on it right with his phone now of course i'm assuming with the resident advisor ticking up on it ready to scan with his qr code so there's a following expert because the following excerpt goes the following it says here the following expert goes as follows whatever so it continues it says um at midnight on Friday, a security guard opened a fixed steel door into the South LA warehouse. Unfamiliar sounds of the late poured out, uh, of late poured out from the underneath. Music, laughing and dancing. Inside, inside, the guard commanded and slammed it shut behind the small line of weary um, but elated party goers and a paisley print face mask. Face mask, face mask. Ugh. A pink neon light be uh, beckoned them to to a pair of masked ushers who check the tickets for what is likely LA's first underground club night since the coronavirus lockdown began. Around a dozen techno fans clustered on a small outdoor patio next to an enclosed main dance floor. The crowd wasn't very big, at that point far fewer than 100 people. But as more guests trickled into the see the dark techno DJ Akan perform, some, is it Ax? Axe can perform. Some looked around in giddy disbelief that it was actually happening during a pandemic. One woman, spritzing fellow guests with hand sanitizer as they walked in, seemed sanguine about the virus, which had claims more than 5,000 lives in California. She said as follows, I'm not worried. I've been suicidal since I was a teenager. She said in a macabre deadpan tone, I guess I'm just not going to hang out with my grandma for a while. God almighty. That decision of like, I'm just going to cut off my grandma and essentially... Uh, sign away my life just so I can go and party is fucking nuts. It's super, super cold, but super true in some regard. It's an accurate representation of people that live that lifestyle. If you're somebody that's a party goer, if you're somebody that commits to the don't forget to go home mantra, right? That famous documentary um, that sort of like opened my eyes about the underground techno dance scene in Berlin, right? It's a seminal documentary. Definitely check it out. It's mostly in German with subtitles, but it's fucking epic. You get to see a young Ricardo Villalobos and others on the documentary talking about their come up in the scene. Um, if you're really committed to that lifestyle, then I guess this in this prolonged period of time that you spend indoors is just not acceptable, right? It's just something that you would, you know, you're not going to give it up. So you would really throw your own family under the bus and essentially cut off any ties with them just so you can go and party. It's fucking nuts, but I think it accurately does describe a lot of people that go out. I think a lot of people, you know, in a burger and queue would probably say they would do the same thing probably, but that is a mad line. It continues, it says... <clears throat> As COVID shut down, the concert industry and all night life um, since March and artists, performers and fans have worried that the pandemic is an existential threat to their livelihoods and culture. Some have tried to replicate the experience with live streams or driving concerts and even Coachella had a family wave the white flag off for 2020. The concert industry could see its 12.2 2 billion projected new revenue all but obliterated this year and musicians and nightlife workers often struggle to get unemployment benefits. Yo, for everyone, because uh, I was included, for everyone that said there's too many festivals, now we know why, isn't it? If there's a 12.2 billion on the table annually, right? There's 12.2 billion worth of monies that you can collect, right? If you put on a good enough festival, if you do a good enough job. Because again, festivals are really hard to kind of, you know, uh, to execute 
But if you do it well, there's a lot of brand loyalty that comes with it, right? Primavera has been a good example. It's fucking one of the biggest commercial festivals in the world. But I had, I've had a good time the first time, so I'm loyal to that brand now. I'll just go there blindly and buy a ticket and go. Um, and I'm sure others have done the same. So there's a lot of risk, but there's also a lot of reward if you're the promoter or the organiser of said festival. So now we know why it is. Every, every, every fucking club night, every club in London for the most part has put on some sort of festival they do during the summer um, because there's so much of a market share out there for you to kind of claim especially if people already trust your brand they trust your establishment they'd be much they'll be more than happy to go and uh, attend one of your festivals that you put on the article continues it says here although los angeles county um retail stores restaurants museums and gyms have been allowed to resume business despite the ongoing coronavirus outbreak concerts and comic uh, music venues sorry are still prohibited from opening under the state rules and la county roadmap of recovery from major festivals to neighborhood rock clubs no one can legally return to live events until governor gavin newsom moves the state to phase four of his plan to reopen businesses and everyone hates gavin newsom in it especially people that work in the nightlife industry they fucking hate that guy um so the Following said, perhaps it's only a matter of time until someone decides to throw one. Anyway, so far, it says there have been no reports of accounts of other LA concert promoters holding similar underground events, but some promoters acknowledge <coughs> they're considering how safely to produce their own events once regulations loosen. Is throwing, throwing a renegade concert with a pandemic still ripping through California, as young woman put it, suicidal or inevitable, given the restaurants, churches, and casinos are filling up anyway? Question to be answered. In this quote, it says, For public health professionals, even though those who are sympathetic to mass gatherings, like the recent protests against police brutality, congregating at a party indoors, it's heads and gamble but that's the problem though man really that the same level again the protests that are happening now at the moment are probably more important than uh, no you say more important it's not it's stupid the protests that are happening at the moment are very important for the current times that we're in it's just unfortunate that they seem to be occurring at the same time a global pandemic is sweeping the you know it's sweeping all across the world that's it's just bad timing but to suggest that one thing is is less is less bad than the other is fucking ridiculous. They're both bad, right? You shouldn't be going out to parties during a pandemic and you shouldn't be going to protest because essentially we want to come out of this on the other side with as less fatalities as possible, with the economy still somewhat, in it's somewhat intact so that you can go on a holiday because if the economy crumbles, there's going to be no planes for you to take anywhere, right? There's going to be no place for you to visit, essentially. You're going to be landlocked for the most of it. So I don't really understand this kind of premise. But again... If you're committed to that lifestyle of going out and of seeking, you know, um, existential moments on the dance floor, I understand why you'd kind of just be like, you know what, fuck it. Let's just do the damn thing. But to be suicidal about it is just whew, tough to handle that one, isn't it? Uh, it's just the following, um, says, it's a following quote from a Dr. Tara Smith. She says, frankly, I think it's a, these are terrible ideas. I understand that everyone wants to get back to normal, but being in a small enclosed area in close contact with many others is one of the highest risk activities one can do. So is protesting with random strangers on the street for a prolonged period of time. They're all everything's dangerous when you go outside, but we're gonna have to take some sort of calculated risk. And again, I just think if there was some sort of directive um with the governments or with these state legislators in terms of what happens next, it would make things so much easier. But because they I guess because everyone in the world has been baby has been kind of treated like a baby by the governments, right? No one's no one went to come out and tell us in February that we were going to be in lockdown until August. They didn't want to say that, right? Because they didn't want to make people get um disgruntled and kind of lose patience. They should have just told us from the beginning we're going to be in lockdown minimum of three months, right? So that when, so that when, so that um, you would get people to comply, so that they could go out sooner. Just say, look, we're going to be in minute lockdown for minimum of three months, but if you behave and you do as you're told in terms of staying indoors, we could loosen the restrictions, you know, sooner. It gives people something to look for, a little bit of a collective, you know, kind of uh, incentive going on. And generally, you have people maybe complying more so just through a selfish need to go out and to go have their, you know, have their festivities for summer. But they didn't do that. They just kind of, you know, pulled us along two week in two week increments. And now look where we are. It says the following. It says, inside the venue, the promoters took many of the obvious precautions. Masks were mandatory. Hand sanitizers were abundant. The 100 person crowd was well below the capacity, even in the main dance floor. Uh, and the DJ stage was way, set way back to the fans. Smith, when told about the safety measures, was not convinced such measures were enough. He says, mask on everyone could help reduce the risk a bit. But even if many in the crowd were wearing them, I suspect they pulled them down to talk. Likely in a very close proximity. If the music is loud, many will take them off to drink as well. She added, will the artist be behind the plexi? class tested for virus before performing how are these being protected from the crowd and the crowd from them we know that singing and shouting appear to help spread the virus further that mere breathing and talking 
which is used to additional risk. The event promoter Xavier Perez declined to comment, good boy, when reached by phone, but uh, the headlining DJ veteran LA Techno producer Axcan, alias of Federico Sanchez Leiva, said he felt confident in the party's uh, security measures and was happy to play. He said, I was clear with the... It's funny that the promoter doesn't want us to talk to the, the paper, but the DJ does, isn't it? That self-promotion, man. You got to get your name out there. He said, I was clear with the promoter that if I doesn't look safe, I'm going to have to cancel. He said, when I got there, I was worried it would be packed. Uh, but everyone had enough time, space to walk the stage. It's the only time you go on DJ where you kind of want a smaller crowd, right? Because no one wants to be, no one wants to headline a night where everyone gets corona and dies, right? You don't want that on your legacy. You don't want that to be on your rap sheet. Um, you don't want RA to write about you like that, do you? He says, when I got there, I was worried it would be packed, but everyone had enough space to walk and the space was secluded in the back with a big opening to the doors, uh, to the outdoors, sorry. It felt safe enough. I was a little worried in the morning, like, am I okay? But to be honest, it felt great. Yeah, I guess I bet it did, man. That's him there. Sanchez Levi, who's a producer, performed electronic music for two decades and toured across the road, across the world, across the road, you know, <laughs> across the globe, said he was sympathetic to the techno fans starving for the community and to artists who desperately need to play to make a living. He said, this is the longest I've ever not played in five years, but I was worried as well. I'm not 20 and the older you are the more chances of the virus getting worse i was a little nervous but i was also wanting to support the tender community everyone's eager to get out there safety is everyone's responsibility the promoter has to do their best but you're responsible for your own safety i agree with that one but yeah mad article isn't it that girl at the top there man that's a fucking line and a half isn't it i'm not worried i've been suicidal since i was a teen i guess i'm not going to hang out with my grandma for a while god damn it sobering in it